What's up guys, we got here. Now today we guys, the Week 8 Battle of the GBA D-League where I was up against Super Gassy, coach of the New York, York Shelmets. Uh, I don't know why I stumbled over that, but anyway, if you are hyped for this battle, please do hit the like button down below. I really, really appreciate it because this is the battle that determines who gets into playoffs. So it's a really, really, really key battle. And um, I definitely put a lot of work into this team to try and make sure that I did have a good chance of winning. But anyway, what we're going to do first of all is run through what he has. So he has Manaphy. He now has Weavile because uh, instead of Latios, because he did he did end up trading with the Dolphinions for that. He also dropped Toxicroak and picked up Fortress. Uh, we've got Mega Ampharos, Torn of the T, Garchomp, Reuniclus, Amoongus, Dewblade, Blissey, and then finally Houndoom as well. So really, really scary draft. Definitely what I would define as the crypt tonight to my draft because Weavile puts a lot of pressure on my draft. So does Manaphy just Manaphy's just a massive problem. I have zero switch ins to it. Um, zero things that can take schools, zero things that can take plus three schools. Um, I mean, Slowbro can take it, but then what does it do in return? I just don't have anything that can handle it. And, uh, Mega Amphros is a massive problem as well. I know I've got Cash Flash, um, sorry, yeah, Cash Flash X Drill, and a few other things, but it's still scary. And then, and then you've got Reuniclus. Reuniclus is just a massive issue because Trick Room, it just okos most of my team. Um, I don't really have much that can wall break it and just, yeah, absolutely massive problems, so... So many problems I have to try and deal with. So I'm definitely on the back foot for this one, I must admit. But what we're doing is we're going to have to try and be a bit clever to try and beat this guy. So what we've got here is Cash Rush Addicts, with Life Orb, and then Sand Force. Now, Sand Force is so I can bluff the Sand Rush. I don't, I don't, I, I think for this battle, I outspeed most of his draft already. So I don't actually need the Sand Rush. I think Sand Force is more important because it means I hit harder. I can confuse him uh, because he'd be like, you know, what's wrong with your calcs and stuff like that. Um, I do apologize. I am... Got a bit of a cold at the minute, so I'm trying to just, uh, yeah. And then I've got Earthquake, Iron Head, Rock Slide, and Rapid Spin. So Rapid Spin to get rid of rocks and stuff like that. Um, obviously, the other three moves just do a huge amount under, uh, under Sand. 252 Adamant to make sure I get the most out of my attack. And then Max and Speed as well to make sure I outspeed most things. I could even outspeed the Manaphy as well if he's Defense Invested. So that was the plan with that. Next up, we do have Motto Motto, which is my Hippowdom with Leftovers and Sandstream. So I wanted the Sandstream to get the Sand up to help Excadrill sweep. And then we've got Earthquake, Ice Fang, Slack Off, and Stealth Rock on here. Ice Fang is for Garchomp. Um, Earthquake just hits everything pretty hard. Uh, Slack Off, obviously, to a cover up. And then finally, Stealth Rock to... Because uh, Rocks are really, really important, especially with that Tornadus. That Tornadus gives me so many, uh, so many things with so many problems. Uh, with 236 in HP. 252 in special defense with a careful nature and then finally 20 in speed to stop him from speed creeping Next up we have Anubis which forms uh, the second part of the defensive core which is physically defensive and uh, just takes on a lot of things um, Takes on Weavile um, Takes on Garchomp and just takes on quite a few different things and is just really bulky and really really good support one as well With Wish and Heal Bell so that means I don't get toxic stored by Blissey and all that sort of stuff because Blissey's a massive problem as well it's, Yeah, so many things that cause me problems uh, next up we do have Dr. Grant, the Tyrantrum with Life Orb and Strong Jaw. Now this guy isn't designed to set up and sweep, he's designed to wall break. So we've got coverage on there that hits every single thing pretty much super effectively. And then finally uh, Crunch is just really great neutral sort of spammy move on there. And then um, Adamant Max Attack and then 92 Speed means I outspeed Modest, Max Speed, at Mega Amphros, which is probably the best one to go for. Because all of his fast, he's got a massive speed gap where he's got really slow mons, really, really fast mons. And I can't outspeed any of the really fast ones, even if they've not got speed investment. So there's no point doing that. And that means I can come in potentially on schools uh, if I need to. Bit risky, but uh, could, could have potential. And then next up, we do have the Manectric with uh, Lightning Rod. So the Lightning Rod is for um, the Mega Amphros. So I could potentially switch into that if needs be, with Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Him Power Ice, and Flame Throw. Now, I'm having to run Timid on this because I need to make sure I outspeed Weavile, and um, the rest just goes into HP for bulk. And then finally, we do have Mirage the Azel with Choice Scarf, Levitate. Now, this is a weird one. Actually, for some reason, this has not saved it. Typical Showdown. That's actually Explosion. Because Explosion means that if I lead off with this, and he leads off Tornadus, I just explode. Because Tornadus is just such a big problem. Being able to just Oko that and get it out of the way is just worth it. So this guy is more of a sort of supportive with Ice Punch as well, which means I don't get suffer from Scarf Chomp too much. If my walls get damaged too much, then obviously that'll be fine. You turn on there to get some uh, initiative. And then finally Trick as well, because there's a lot of his slow mons don't appreciate Trick as well. So hopefully this should be okay. Motto Motto can stall out Reuniclus in Trick Room. And... Um, 
yeah, a lot of things can do a lot of damage to that Reuniclus as well. So even if it does then set up, I should hopefully be able to take it out from there. So uh, what we're going to do without further ado is jump straight into the battle because I'm, as I said, I'm putting these both uh, both of these videos together just because for ease and uh, the fact of the timings and stuff like that. So let's go straight to the battle. Okay, so we're now at the battle and unfortunately we did have to do it on showdown because of uh, my university system being absolutely terrible because I have to talk with the network director to get my 3DS hooked up and... Typically, trying to get hold of them is almost impossible, and they're really slow, and they take weeks to even reply to you, so it's just, ah. But anyway, so we are on showdown. So what you can see with his team is he did not bring the uh, Taunders T, but he does have quite a lot of offense on there. So it is going to be quite scary, I must admit. He's got Reuniclus, got Blissey, and just a lot of bulk there, and... Uh, yeah, 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 having the Manaphy there as well really, really sucks. But there's not much we could do. We we do have to sort of try and work around that. So without further ado, we'll just jump straight in. So he leads off with Shelmet as I, Mr. Shelmet, as I lead off with Mirage. Now I had to try and work out here. I didn't know what set this guy was. Do I go for an explosion to get some damage off? Or do I just go for U-turn or do I trick? I decided to actually U-turn here. Because um, I was really not sure. And I did have to go into Ferro. Unfortunately, he burns me first turn. Because Ferro, this is the thing. I have almost no switches for Mr. Shelmet. It's really, really annoying. So I do make her up here. And I should really have gone for Volt Switch. But I decided to go for Thunderbolt. Because I just needed to try and get rid of that guy. So he is out into Blissey now. So now Ferro, this is not a good start for me at all, I must admit. So I go into Motomoto. Motom, I need to set my rocks up. That was what I decided was my next priority. Unfortunately, though, it does mean another free switch into this. This, yeah, as I said, this thing is just a massive, massive problem. Because he can just school freely on so many things. So I go into Tyrantrum here. Because I need to try and get that uh, sort of offense go. He does go for a rain dance here. For I, so I end up forcing him out here as he does go out into this. Thunder Fang obviously is a mute. So that was a really, really good play on his part. So I now go out into Anubis because I know I can handle this. See what set he is. And he reveals he's probably Scarf there from the lack of item and the amount of damage as well. So he goes back out into this, this thing. Yeah, just <laughs> such a pain to try and deal with. And I have to go out into Mirage here. I know I can take a Rain Booster Scald, and I had to try and work out too. So I decided to go for a Trick here, because that way, if I could get a Scarf on it, that would be fine, because I saw that was physically defensive. But it does go into Fortress, which does actually really help us, because it means he, if he wants to Rapid Spin, we can just go into whatever we want to, and I know I can take it. So I go out into Tyrantrum, and he does go for that Rapid Spin there. So we know we're in a really, really strong position. Goes out into this guy. I decided to go for Crunch, because it's neutral, hits everything. Uh, fairly, fairly hard, and that means I can now go into Motomoto Moto because I know I can take these hits. Goes for Dragon Claw, that's absolutely fine by me. I can now just go and proceed to set my rocks up, but does he does get more switch into Manaphy, but I do go for a double here into Cash Rush, and this is where things get interesting. So obviously, in this position, he, you would assume that I would end up going, uh, I was probably switching out from here, but I do get that EQ off, which is huge, 66%, That's and I saw from his set, it is max physically defensive, and then from there, I could fire off another EQ. So I just fire off EQs here because I know I can do a huge amount in terms of pressure onto his team. But goes out into Weavile now. Now, Weavile is a massive problem. Go out into... Oh, so I went out into Anubis here to try and wall that. And he does get that knockoff off, which in the long term is actually really, really huge. Goes for a Break Break, but I knew I could take that, so that was absolutely fine. So I go for the Wish here, and um, he, as he goes out into the Shelmet. So I just go for the Protect, so I had to go for that Protect there. It's really, really not looking good for me, I must admit. So I go out into Excadrill because I counter. I knew I had a really good chance to kill. Uh, even without the... Uh, and a crit just completely seals the deal there. So that's absolutely great. God, getting that out of the way was absolutely huge. Unfortunately, he does end up going for the Brick Break there and takes me out. Now, that that was a really, really tricky play to make. Because if I'd have switched out, he'd have got an SD up. He would have swept. If I'd stayed in and he'd Swords Dance and EQ, then I'd have been able to obviously take him out. So it was it was a really, really tricky call, because I could have sacked off my Mega Manetric there, but uh, I really could not afford to, because that would have ended up sweeping me. Um, so that was why I was forced to stay in, which was really, really upsetting, because it was it would put in so much work. So it was, it was definitely, with hindsight, not worth it. But I didn't, as I said, I didn't know if he would have Pack SD as his fourth move there. It was really, really tricky to know. So I go for the Wish here. As I'm just healing up my team. As he decides to go for Seismic Tosses. Because he does not want me to go out into my Mega Manetric and heal that up. So I'm just going for Wishes here. Because I know he's, I'm forcing him to keep going for Seismic Tosses. So I go for Protect here. 
as he's just going for these seismic tosses, getting, trying, just trying to get as much uh, onto me as possible and stopping me from actually getting that switch uh, going. So I go into Dr. Grant here because I know that I can heal up. That's absolutely great. So I heal up to almost full. Now, I just I counted it and saw that Crunch had a good chance to actually do a fair amount of damage. So I decided to go for Crunch here. But unfortunately, he does reveal the counter, which is really, really painful because that means now... I've lost almost every single way to try and take out this Blissey. And this Blissey is becoming more and more of a problem. So, uh, I do know the moveset now. So, now I can start setting up my rocks. So, set up my rocks here. And that's absolutely great. So, he goes for Rapid Spin here. As, um, he's just going to try and get rid of my rocks. So, I'm just going to go for EQs here and just keep firing these off. Because that's my best bet from here. So, he does end up going out into this guy. Now... This is where things get painful. So I go for EQ, get a crit, which is really, really nice. Psychic does that uh, a fair amount, but I know I'm able to wall this. So that's absolutely fine. I have to go for Slack Off in case he trick rooms that turn. And it just puts me under a lot more pressure. So he is just going to recover. And having the recover makes such a difference. Because that means I just can't kill it straight away. And at least sort of weaken it down while it tries to sweep with trick rooms. So really as I, as I predicted so many things just caused me so many problems and there's almost nothing i can do draft wise to actually improve that so there's a lot of sort of stalling out here as so i decided to go out into a's elf now hoping he didn't go for the recover here but he did end up going for the recover so i decided to make a bit of a last dash hope go for explosion there as unfortunately at that point he goes to trick room revealing he does have trick room so now he's able just to recover stall and yeah really really hard to try and take this guy out all my, yeah really really struggling so he does end up going for that so i'm just firing off eqs here and uh he does just keep spamming recover because he has to because of the amount of damage that i'm doing but i'm aware he's going to be pp stalling me here unfortunately so i'm just spamming off eqs here because i cannot i just need to put pressure on the guy and he ends up going out into these nuts here to try and get rid of the rocks which is fair enough but uh, as I said, I would be able to set those up later on. And I knew I could take anything from it uh, all the way up to explosions. So that was absolutely fine for me to stay in. So I set up my rocks here as he is just going to keep rapid spinning. So I know I've just got to try and kill this guy. But I do decide to go out to Anubis here because uh, that way I can start healing stuff up. I could potentially heal up my Mega Manetric as well, which would be my last sort of ditch hope. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't really come to fruition. Because he does go into the Blissey and just spam Seismic Toss. And now, we're just going to skip through this. Because basically what happens, we're, we're going to skip keep skipping through here. Is there's just a huge amount of PP stalling. Because I don't have any way to handle this. And it ends up going on for 50 more turns before the hour timer goes up. And unfortunately, uh, we have to take the loss here because we have less Pokemon. So he was able to completely stall us out with Blissey at the end. Which is really, really unfortunate. So that means... Unfortunately, we are out of the playoffs, which is really, really, it, I must admit, I am quite sad about that. But, as I said, the better man won, so he's going to be going to uh, playoffs and we will not be. So, our, our season has ended here, which is it's quite sad, I must admit. But, um, I've had a really, really good time doing this, and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching as well. I want to thank you guys for your support as well, because I really, really appreciate it. Honestly, just having you guys cheering me on has been absolutely fantastic. I learned a huge amount, like, absolutely huge amount. I had so many epiphanies when it came to battling and stuff like that and hopefully i'm going to go back to the iep and actually bring those ideas back into the iep and hopefully win the iep because um that would be absolutely fantastic for you guys that don't know what the iep is it's um the league that i was in last before this which was a pokemon showdown league and uh i yeah i must admit it's gonna be good fun to go back there and sort of try out some more fun stuff there's a bit less pressure and stuff like that so i'm sure that should be good fun but anyway thank you guys so much for your support i hope you guys did enjoy the battle i know obviously we did not perform as well as we could have done but anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you guys later mccaddy out